All right. <clears throat> Give me a second. So I think uh, Alexis is currently wrapped up on another call. So uh, he may be running a little bit late. Uh, ben can't make it uh, today either due to a staff meeting. Uh, I see Brian Grant is here. Is Brian Cantrell on the line? Uh, is Camille? Don't see her yet. Jonathan Bull is here. I see Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan and Quentin is... Yep, I'm here. Oh, there you are. Okay, couldn't find you. Thanks, Quentin. All right, so I got Brian Grant, Jonathan Bull, Ken Owens, Sam Lambert, Quentin Hull are online. Alexa should be hopefully joining us shortly, but uh, in the interest of time, um, we'll, we'll kind of get started. Um, moving to slide five, the agenda. Yep, so quick agenda today will be essentially um, welcoming a new project in the sandbox, uh, a little discussion around the safe working group. And uh, we have two community presentations uh, today from the Alibaba folks. So one is Dragonfly, the other is open messaging. Um, we'll discuss a little bit about the community backlog of presentations that we have to uh, review and then open it up to any questions uh, from the community. So slide six. Um, simple welcome to um, the TIKV community, uh, to CNCF. They entered the sandbox on August 28th. Um, this is also our second project that was born from China in CNCF, which is kind of exciting for me on a personal level and kind of shows how global our community is. But other than that, welcome TIKV uh, and looking forward for you to grow within the foundation. Uh, slide seven is kind of our uh, backlog of uh, presentation proposals that we're uh, asking for review from the TOC contributor and wider community. So uh, two big things, um, uh, Cortex and Build Packs have both secured TOC sponsors and are kind of working through the uh, project proposal process to enter uh, the sandbox. Um, we have a backlog of um, net data and key cloak coming up for uh, presentations in the future. Uh, next slide. Um, this is uh, something I'd like the TOC to discuss. I don't know if we'll have enough time to kind of go over this and we may move this discussion email, but we have a handful of projects that have asked to present themselves to the TOC and wider community. Um, we have to essentially make a decision on whether we would like to invite them or not, uh, if they're good fits. I don't know if uh, any TOC members have taken a look at these yet and have any opinions of which ones uh, we should uh, at least include and kind of start from there. Uh, Brian or any folks have any comments on these particular ones of whether we should include them or exclude them uh, from uh, presentations. It'd be good to make a decision on these. Some of these have folks have been waiting for a while. So. Uh, I haven't had time to mm -hmm. take a look at them. I know they've been waiting for a while, but in July and August were just pretty brutal. So I'll, I'll try Summer to, months. It, it, there were a lot of things going on. Uh, <laughs> okay, no worries. Anyone else? Clarify, Chris, yeah, are, are we, uh, is it just a scheduling issue that we don't have enough slots for them or uh, a question of whether they will present at all? It, it's, it's, the, it's the latter. So, uh, I mean, we have slots it, as, as long as you push them out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's both. I think yeah. I would like to, all, in addition to taking a look at these, I would also like to uh, come up with an agenda to take care of some non-project related issues. Uh, yep. So we need to figure out how much space to give them. Yep. So. Um, any, any other comments here? Uh, just, just to repeat what I mentioned to you before, uh, which is that I think we need a blanket uh, inclusion exclusion principle, uh, especially for the sandbox, because at the moment our uh, exclusion criteria are essentially non-existent. Um, and so if we follow them, then you know all of these should get to present and potentially get into the yeah. sandbox. Um, and if we're not going to do that, then we need to come up with a clear uh, distinction. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely, I, I agree. I, I have some thoughts of uh, basically, you know, at least one TOC person uh, needs to approve uh, a project to be presented, at least, as kind of a, a bit of a gate. But uh, we could kind of move this discussion um, onto the mailing list to kind of firm this up since uh, the interest has definitely uh, spiked a bit in the, in the last uh, couple months. 
All right. Um, so you will move that discussion to the mailing list. Um, moving on, next slide. Uh, Governing board working updates. So just working, working group updates. We have four official working groups that uh, meet. Uh, more importantly, we have one uh, new working group that is being voted upon uh, related to the security space. So I kicked off that vote this, uh, this morning. Uh, so I appreciate uh, any feedback to the uh, safe slash security working group. Um, you could see their full project proposal linked off that uh, messaging thread. Uh, moving on. Ah, okay, now we got a uh, community presentation. So uh, we have two of them. Um, so uh, we will have uh, Alan Sun from uh, the Ollie team present uh, Dragonfly. So are you there, Alan? Hi, hi, Chris, I'm Alan Sun. Okay, all right, good, okay. good to hear from you. It's uh, now your turn to drive and I appreciate you, uh, especially if you're joining us at the late hour over there. So, all right, take care. Okay. Thank you, thank all of you. And uh, I'm with the Dragonfly team to present the Dragonfly. Uh, I'm Alan Sun from Alibaba Group, and uh, I'm responsible for the container ecosystem in Alibaba. And uh, what is Dragonfly? Dragonfly is an open source P2P based image distribution and a file system, uh, uh, distribution system. Dragonfly is an intelligent P2P based container image distribution system. And it provides a native image distribution solutions for cloud native applications. And currently we can uh, integrate, uh, integrate, integrate Dragonfly with Kubernetes very natively. Okay. And, and uh, here we list some features of Dragonfly. Uh, in cloud native, we uh, Dragonfly focuses on the uh, image distribu distribution part. Uh, about the distribution part, we can list uh, three kinds of uh, 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 distinguished features. The first is the efficiency. We provide P2P based image and file distribution, and we can provide another uh, passive CDN to avoid repeatable downloads to reduce the, uh, uh, the cost. And the second is on the flow control side. Uh, we can provide a task level and a host level net speed limit. With the net speed limit, uh, Dragonfly can protect your uh, uh, host disk and uh, uh, protect you from high, uh, high used input and output. Uh, the third one is security. Uh, Dragonfly can uh, encrypt your image distribution uh, when image transmission. Okay, and uh, last but not least, uh, Dragonfly is very easy and uh, very simple to use. We can say Dragonfly does nothing uh, invasive to uh, all kinds of currently container technologies, like the most popular container engine Docker, uh, like another container engine open sourced by Alibaba, which is named Punch Container. With all these container engines, you can pull container images with Dragonfly as usual. Okay, so. Uh, if you if you match issues, uh, we can see uh, Dragonfly can cover such kind of use cases. If you want to increase uh, image downloading speed, if you want if you want to reduce your bandwidth bandwidth cost at least uh, fifty percent off, and if you want to distribute a large content image, uh, maybe these are, these images are uh, larger than ten gigabytes. We can uh, we can say when lots of traditional applications are moving to uh, cloud native. Uh, uh, at, uh, at first, at the very beginning, their images are very large. So Dragonfly can improve the di uh, distribution efficiency. Uh, also, if the cluster is at a very large scale, I think Dragonfly is your best choice. So uh, uh, Dragonfly also can ensure the stability of business services is not affected by the down, downloading task because in the production, we have met lots of issues uh, 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 like these kind of uh, scenarios. Uh, we can also prevent data from leaking in transmission. Security is another matter we should take more care of. Okay, so next slides. Uh, we are very happy to see currently Dragonfly have lots of production users like Chat Mobile, which is the most famous operation company companies in China. Uh, in their data center, Dragonfly serves more than uh, 1,000 nodes. 
and another DD, uh, also iFlight Tight, uh, which is the most famous speech intelligence companies in China. And uh, we also we are very happy to have another global uh, customer, which is Lazida in Southeast Asia. Uh, and uh, Herma, UC Browser, and Map.com, and also Alibaba Cloud, they are also using Dragonfly to speed up the, uh, the, the distribution to ensure the, the, the distribution uh, transmission. And uh, in the and financial, and financial part, uh, we are very happy to see Ant Financial, uh, they adopt Dragonfly in tens of thousands of nodes in the data center to provide financial services uh, globally. Uh, in addition, Cainyang and Tema and Taobao, Taobao, they are also uh, adopters of Dragonfly. This, this is all about the uh, production, next slides. Here we will here. Uh, tell all of us a little bit about the architecture. At the first level, we can see uh, the Dragonfly controller. This is a controller which takes advantages of the Dragonfly's API to manage what is working inside of uh, Dragonfly. At the second level, we can see Supernode. Supernode is a node which manages uh, the, the distribution part in, uh, in the data center or in a, uh, in a zones. Uh, uh, at the third level, we can see uh, the host. On the host of node, we definitely have container engine, and there's a DF get as a proxy and a DF, DF daemon to manage how to put images in the P2P uh, network. Next slide. Uh, this is more specific. Uh, in the super node, we have, the, we have provided the API, and uh, in the uh, uh, decoupled scheduler or models, we can see the P2P scheduler providing a uh, lot of algorithm and a lot of management. In the CDN manager, we can manage uh, the image cache locally and the transmission, we can limit the rate and we can ensure the uh, security. And we also provide the preheater pre functionality to, to for the deployment of the cloud native applications. In the file manager part, uh, we can provide the functionality of GC disk and also uh, uh, an interface for all kinds of uh, file systems to cache the data. So next slide, yeah. And here we will introduce the briefly procedure of pulling images by Dragonfly. Uh, as usual, uh, the container engine will uh, send a request to pull image from the node proxy, and the node proxy will send a pulling request to a super node. If the image is, uh, does not exist on the super node, definitely super node will download from the registry to catch the image locally. At the fourth part, the super node will reply the nodes, those details about the peers, which already has the uh, 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 image blocks and with the fifth part, uh, fifth part, uh, the, the proxy will transport the blocks among all the peers network. At the last step, uh, we will finish the whole polling with all blocks downloaded. And uh, here's the graph. So next. Uh, here's the project history. Uh, at about uh, the June of 2015, we inception of the project in Alibaba. And then maybe uh, 10 months uh, later, uh, Dragonfly has already become uh, a very fundamental infrastructure technology in Alibaba, covering the whole Alibaba group. And uh, last year, at November, we decided to make it open source. Uh, with open source, we achieved a lot of uh, uh, milestones, like at uh, June this year, we've already exceeded 1,000 stars on GitHub. And, uh, one month later, we get 2,000 stars. And currently, we are very happy to have more than 20 adopters, uh, not only in China, but also uh, global uh, adopters like Lazida. And uh, with the ecosystem building, we integrate the Punch container and Docker. And, uh, and uh, for the CNCF part, we have already do cooperations with the Hubbard project. Hubble project is responsible for the image storage or the 
energy assessment, but Dragonfly can take over the distribution part for the CNCF. CNCF. Also, we try to make Dragonfly to be deployed by um, via here and uh, and uh, and others. Okay, next. Uh, here is the community. Currently, we have two more than two thousand stars, and we provide a user group discussion group and a developed discussion group. Uh, uh, the following is the maintainer details. And we have one internal team in Alibaba, and we are very happy to see we have the, uh, we have already one outside maintainer from eBay China. They are uh, they are also a doctor of, uh, of Dragonfly. For the con contributors side, we have uh, one team works on Dragonfly. This team, some 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 engineers are part time. And uh, we have also another full-time engineer, which is focusing on the open source. Outside eBay, Twinar, and the Maytime companies, uh, they are very active contributors of Dragonfly project. And we've already one, have one outside collector. And also, we are very happy to see uh, uh, the TOC members who sponsor this project, Dragonfly, to the sandbox. Okay, next. Uh, here we'll share a little bit about the Dragonfly's roadmap. Uh, as, uh, as November this year, we will we will make Dragonfly super node deployment to use Hill and DF get DF daemon with daemon set. And uh, uh, with the integration with Haber, we will uh, release a general available GA version uh, before uh, November this year. And uh, uh, before uh, in in the late of 2018, we will uh, make security a lot of uh, improvement. Support supports the private container image or authentication in Supernode API, and we will also support different encryption encryption algorithm in data transmission. With the efficiency patch, uh, we will definitely improve the dynamic rate limiting when downloading. And we also to provide intelligent scheduling algorithm, improve distribution efficiency. Uh, and we also will investigate the possibility to integrate the IPFS. Uh, open this part, we will make the designment of Dragonfly to be uh, pluggable. Uh, we try to make Dragonfly in the cloud native production with a, a scalable component and uh, uh, makes the component of Dragonfly more user custom customized. Also, we will try to refactor Supernode in Golang to attract more developers. Uh, the, with the scalability, uh, we will simplify the complexity, and uh, with the stability, we will class the Supernode to, de to decrease the possibility of value. And uh, what do we want from the CNCF? Uh, we should say, at first, uh, we need to improve the uh, influence of the Dragonfly. And second, we want the CNCF to allow more people, more adopters to use Dragonfly. Then we can attract more active contributors to this project. And finally, uh, Dragonfly can grow very fiercely. Okay, that's all for my presentation. And uh, any questions? And uh, here's a link of the Dragonfly on GitHub. Mm -hmm. And we are very also we sincerely wish uh, TOC members to the sponsor for Dragonfly to enter sandbox level. Okay, thank you. Cool. cool. Thank you, Alan. Does anyone have any questions for him? I, I have confirmed that I think Jonathan Bull is interested in sponsoring this. So we have one TOC sponsor. So any questions? Hi, yeah, I have a question. What uh, requirements do you have of the operating system and or file systems that Dragonfly operates on? Okay, so what kind of file system we were already supported to cache the data, right? The question is, is that? Uh, I'm wondering what the portability limitations are. What file systems and uh, Linux distributions this will, and potentially container runtimes this will interoperate with today. Okay, so currently uh, we can support all kinds of uh, container runtimes. 
uh, we can integrate it with Dragonfly with the proxy uh, with container D, Docker, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the punch container. Uh, with the file system, uh, currently the cast image is only supported on locally, local, local storage. And in the future, we will support more file system to, to, to cast the, the image in Supernode. Okay, so it just uses the local file system and it doesn't matter what the specific file system implementation is? Yeah, currently we only support okay. the local file system. Okay, thanks. But more, more file system support is in our roadmap, yeah. How much? So some people... Oh, Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. I already asked one question. I was going to say, some people do things like this with BitTorrent. So what is the what are sort of the advantages of this over over just using like a BitTorrent type model? Uh, uh, I think we are going to make our uh, uh, P two P scheduling algorithm more pluggable. And uh, currently, we only support uh, the protocol protocol which is uh, uh, implemented by Alibaba. Uh, I think this is more uh, native to the scenarios we met, uh, but in the future we will try to support the torrent, yeah. Is it correct that this uh, Dragonfly has uh, integrated with caching as well? It's not just transfer? It keeps track of what Im image layers are present and which ones are needed? Okay, uh, beg your pardon? Does Dragonfly keep track of which image layers are present and which ones are needed by the running containers? Uh, or is that uh, a separate China, concern? Uh, uh, I'm wondering if I understand your question. You are asking, uh, does the container runtime can uh, get aware of the, which layers are, are on the node, right? On the peer node? Just uh, slide 19, step three is cache the image. Is that done by Dragonfly or the existing image management performed by the container runtime? Container runtime? Yeah, the image layer blocks is uh, managed in the runtime, right? Uh, it's not that critical, Never mind. I'll, I'll take a look, thanks. And Alan, maybe one other question here. The, the notion that Dragonfly is intelligent um, is uh, fantastic. And kind of curious if you can elaborate a little bit about any level of intelligence that Dragonfly might have um, by the way in which it would restrict distribution on a per node basis. If certain images you know, may never be scheduled to a certain node based on you know, scheduling restrictions or certain things that you would find um, in, a, in a manifest file? Does, does Dragonfly account for that or does Dragonfly uh, just distribute uh, images as much as it can sort of, you know, without, you know, without necessarily understanding when and where a given image might be, need to be pulled? Okay, okay. Uh, frankly speaking, current Dragonfly only support to trans uh, distributes the image layers, not for the manifest of the image. So if you want to download the manifest of the image, we still to communicate with the image registry currently. Yeah. Okay, any questions? All right, uh, we will continue discussion on the mailing list, but uh, thank you, Alan, uh, for your time. And uh, if there's any questions, please uh, follow up on the mailing list and uh, Alan and the Dragonfly team will do best to answer them. So thank you. Thank you, thank you all of you. Cool. Next up, um, we have uh, open messaging. Is someone from the open messaging team there?
Hello, hello. Star six to unmute. Hello. Can yeah. Oh, yeah, we hear you. You're a little bit uh, light on our end, but uh, try again. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you now. <laughs> um, All right. Do you, do you want to uh, steer the presentation or uh, are you okay with? Can you see the next slide? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In the next 10 to 15 minutes, I will give a presentation on open messaging specification. Uh, I'm Jerry, one of the TSC members of Open Messaging, and, and I'm really sorry to tell you that Ron Gosling does not feel well, so uh, I will represent him to report today. Uh, he's sitting next to me anyway. Now, please, next slide. Um, good morning. Uh, sorry. Uh, it, it's, it's quite late in Beijing now, and we can barely keep our uh, eyes open, so if there is anything <laughs> that is not clear... <laughs> no can... worries. We'll follow up in the email list for you later. Uh, my presentation is comprised of six parts. Well, I will introduce our group and the motivation about open messaging. I will then describe open messaging, open standard, and community de uh, development in details. And the last two parts are our roadmap and the future plans. Next slide, please. Uh, we are from Apache Ro Rocket MQ Project Management Committee members. Apache Rocket MQ is donated by Alibaba Group and is the very first Apache non-Hadoop ecosystem top-level project of China. Um, Rocket MQ is a distributed messaging and streaming platform with low latency, high performance and reliability, uh, trillion level capacity and flexible scalability. You know, Rocket MQ robustly provides stable infrastructure with the, with the transfer throughput of more than one trillion message just in Alibaba's November 11th shopping festival and has also been widely used in thousands of companies outside of Alibaba group. Uh, until now, Rocket MQ currently has more than 5,000 stars and more than 2,400 forks on GitHub, which we believe is a uh, hard proof of our capabilities to run a thriving community. Well, in the past 10 years, we have focused on providing messaging services to traditional users. Uh, however, there are increasing demands for cloud users on cloud native messaging services. In this world changing period, we have been facing many technical issues that make it so difficult for cloud users to access multi messaging platforms without barriers. barriers. Uh, because there's no cloud native messaging standard in the industry for now. And that is why we present open messaging standard. Next, please. Well, open messaging is a vendor neutral and language independent standard, provides industry guidelines for areas of uh, finance, e-commerce, IoT, and big data, and aims to develop messaging and streaming applications across heterogeneous systems and platforms. Well, compared to other protocols or standard like XMPP or AMQP or MQTT or JMS, etc., open messaging is not limited to Java environment and wire level protocol. And not like other standards, we have specified guidelines for, for load balance, fault tolerance, administration security, and streaming features, which perfectly support the need of modern cloud native messaging and the streaming applications. Next, please. Well, in order to create a cloud native messaging standard and reduce developer access costs, open messaging has several spotlight features as shown in this slide. Well, first, open messaging not only provides a, lang a large range of support, including finance, e-commerce, and IoT, but it's also programming language independent. And secondly, in big data ecosystem, uh, open messaging also provides streaming and connecting abilities to exchange data with other systems. And third, open messaging is a uh, standard for cloud native applications. We define a specified URL access to the cloud vendors and a load specified messaging driver. And last and very importantly, open messaging does not limit the uh, implementation of vendors, but provide a standard benchmark for developers to evaluate the implementations of each vendor fairly. 
Next, please. Uh, we have been included in the uh, CNCF landscape, and thank you very much for your appreciation for that. And uh, we sincerely hope that we can work together to create a more perfect ecology with a uh, CNCF hosted project. Next, please. Well, as a cloud native messaging standard, open messaging is not only a very useful complement for the e ecology of CNCF, but uh, we can easily integrate with other projects already in the CNCF as well. Well, open messaging can be integrated with gRPC to provide asynchronous support. The second, open messaging can be binded to cloud events, standardizing all events in contents as well as transmission processes. Third, open messaging can be integrated with FluentD and uh, uh, Prometheus as a, as a connector. And finally, uh, open messaging can also be integrated with operator to make useful sta uh, stateful messaging platforms easier to manage. Next, please. Open messaging domain model is based on Q model where Q is the carrier of messages. It is a logical destination which receives messages from the producer and then transfers to the consumer. It is noteworthy that a queue should be divided into partitions where a message is routed to a specified partition by message key in the message header. And the domain model also supports multi-operations. A message can be routed from queue to another queue or be filtered. Users can therefore combine various operations to meet various scenarios, such as a group subscription, batch sending, and so on. Moreover, open messaging supports pull and push model for consumers, so it can be easily integrated to streaming solutions. Next, please. Well, this slide describes our core contribution, the open messaging specification, I think which, uh, which is also the essential value of this uh, project. Open messaging uh, specification is derived from the abstraction of the domain model in the previous slide in which the schema is used to describe the domain model of the message. It contains not just the data, but the common metadata of a message as well. In the meantime, it's not a wire level protocol, therefore it has no limitation at all for vendors' realizations. Open messaging also provides an op optional runtime interface for binding these schemas to implementations I think it's the first and very important step towards uh, portability of a union message platform. Next, please. Uh, in, on this slide, I will introduce our community. Well, this page, uh, this page shows the operational data for our communities. Uh, so far, we have released the 1.0.0 uh, preview version and have already got more than 500 stars and 160 folks on GitHub. Our group is currently composed of 70 SE members from four organizations, nine maintainers from six organizations, and 15 community enthusiasts who are constantly contributing to us. Up to now, six versions have been released and more than 600 commits have been made. Next, please. Our founding members include companies and organizations from a variety of industries. Uh, Alibaba is a Chinese company that provides C2C, B2C, and B2B e-commerce services, as well as cloud services. Yahoo is globally known for its search engine and related services. Didi is one of the largest ride-sharing companies in the world, providing transportation services for more than 400 million users in China. And WeBank is China's first private commercial bank established. One of its major shareholders is Tencent. Uh, the last two, uh, Stream, Streamlio and the Data Pipeline, are two startup companies that concentrate on big data and streaming solutions. Next, please. We also got universal support from commercial and open source vendors, where Alibaba Cloud, Tencent Cloud, Qing Cloud, Rocket MQ, Revit MQ, and the Pausa have already confirmed their contribution willingness. 
AWS, Azure, Google, Kafka, and NATS have also shown great interest. Our current open messaging solution has already been commercialized over Alibaba Cloud and has a yearly revenue of more than 15 million US dollars. Uh, therefore, we are confident that our project would definitely have a prosperous future in commercialization. Next, please. We have also been recognized by many industry experts. Okay. Uh, next, please. And next, please. Yeah, thank you. Our roadmap is divided into four phases, and currently we have released the 1.0.0 uh, preview version. We really hope to get support from CNCF and major uh, popular messaging platforms, and then we will try to integrate with cloud events. In phase four, we will focus on ecosystem building, providing open connector and streaming specification. Next, please. And in the last part, I will introduce our vision in the future. We want to make open messaging a perfectly unified messaging bridge to connect different commercial applications and various big data streaming com computing platforms. And at the same time, we hope to get support from well-known open source vendors to create the complete messaging ecosystem. Next, please. And in the future, we also hope to fully commercialize open messaging over major cloud vendors to make open messaging a common messaging standard like Alibaba Cloud, AWS, Azure, et cetera, ensuring that users have a friendly connection specifications of every cloud service providers. Uh, next, please. Uh, that's all my report about open messaging. In the right corner is our Twitter QR code, and our official website is openmessaging.cloud. We've been working very hard to participate in the course of uh, CNCF and the Linux Foundation in China. We became platinum member of CNCF last year and uh, become the top level sponsor of LC3 and uh, CooperCon in Beijing and Shanghai, respectively. The two flagship events for Linux Foundation and the CNCF held in China this year. Well, we had a uh, discussion with Alex during the uh, Copenhagen Summit this year, and he gave us a lot of great suggestions. Many thanks to Alex here. Uh, we're sincerely looking forward to you, to your kind attention and endorsement. And thank you for listening. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any questions from the TOC or community? Yeah, I had one. It's, it's Quinton here. Um, could you just clarify um, at what level the standard is? So you mentioned this is not a wire protocol standard, uh, and it's also multi-language. So it's not entirely clear to me for uh, someone wanting to implement this, what exactly is the standard that they uh, have access to? Where does that fit in the stack? Yeah, um, Du Heng, one of them, TSC members of all the messaging, and uh, I will present uh, him to answer his question. And open messaging is a uh, uh, application standard schema, and uh, it's a specification for uh, users. Uh, it's about met, it's about um, and the uh, users can binding with open messaging uh, transport in transport all uh, give some uh, all we we also uh, we also made some pro pros we will we also provide some interface to to as an optional to users to uh, make a, a good uh, binding and implementation. But we have no any limitation for users or vendors to, uh, to, to implement it. Yeah. I have a 
related question. I mean, I might guess that it's similar to cloud events and that the common metadata properties could be represented in multiple uh, data encoding formats. Um, how similar or dissimilar is this from uh, cloud events? Since yeah. I saw cloud events was, yeah. it supported cloud events or vice versa or something. Actually, we have noticed uh, cloud events uh, in months ago and uh, uh, just like cloud events uh, uh, and uh, open, uh, open metrics, uh, we uh, made a pu put a request to uh, make. Uh, we want to make a pu pull request to binding with cloud events, but we focused on the whole messaging uh, transport, uh, whole messaging uh, field, uh, and uh, open and cloud events more focused on the events uh, or functions and other serverless uh, uh, computing. We can provide a. Uh, uh, provide a standard standard transmission for cloud events and we will uh, once uh, in the future combine with the cloud events and integrate it with cloud events i think it's a complement of of the CNCF project okay thanks and the relationship to rocket mq wasn't clear to me is this backward compatible with rocket mq or is just inspired by RocketMQ, can you clarify that relationship? Actually, Open Magic, uh, our RocketMQ PMC members uh, and uh, RocketMQ is an implementation of open messaging. And open messaging, uh, and in the last, uh, in the next version of RocketMQ Rocket 5, we will support, uh, we will make a full support of open messaging. But in the, uh, in the current version of RocketMQ, we have been implemented the 0, 0, 0.03 version open messaging. And you can find some implementation in my our GitHub. Yeah. Okay. So it's similar to open metrics uh, being inspired by the Prometheus format. It's not 100% compatible, but future Rock, Rocket MQ uh, versions will support the whatever the, the changes have been made in the open messaging specification. I see Chris nodding. Okay. Thank thanks. Thank you. And uh, just one question: Why not? Uh, why not Apache? Just out of curiosity. O open messaging is already uh, under the Linux Foundation auspices, so I see it's already neutrally owned. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Any question? Uh, and yeah, who from Google? Uh, have you? is involved with this since they were mentioned. So I can follow up with them. Sorry? If you know. Sorry, please. Uh, it was mentioned that Google Cloud was expressed interest. I was wondering if there was specific people that I could, whether you were aware of who those people were. We are still come, come, come communicating with Google Cloud leader and uh, and the uh, uh, PubSub leader uh, to make uh, a progress uh, uh, for make a, a progress for uh, integrate uh, in Google Cloud platform. But uh, Google Cl Cloud platform is still evaluating our project. And uh, I think uh, if we can evolve the in CSF, we can uh, we we can make a good collaborator in the future. Okay, thanks, I'll track it down. Any question? Hi, this is Colin from the Nats team. Um, I, yeah, I was kind of uh, unclear as to what specific uh, specifics in the specification um, make open messaging cloud friendly or cloud native. Uh, yeah, uh, our our open messaging standard is oriented uh, 
uh, is cloud native oriented, and uh, if you can find the not, uh, not only the XMPP or MQP or other MQTT or uh, some implementation of Kafka or RabbitMQ or RocketMQ didn't support current cloud native, uh, cloud native, in the modern cloud native period. Uh, they cannot provide a fully, they cannot make the user access to it without a barrier. And the uh, cloud open messaging defines a uh, 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 specified URL to access every cloud vendors. And the users can access uh, open uh, open you know, using open messaging can be easily accessed, uh, access, uh, access uh, every cloud uh, platform. And uh, we are Open messaging is a cloud oriented standard. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> cool. Any other questions? Otherwise, uh, I kicked off two threads on the mailing list um, so we can move to further discussions uh, there, which can be a little bit better. Um, thank you uh, for your time. So. Exactly. And hopefully you feel better too. So sorry that you're sick, Vaughn. Um, so moving on, uh, just kind of standard links to our project review slash backlog. Um, moving to the next slide. Uh, big events coming up. Um, hopefully we'll see many of uh, your shiny faces in Shanghai on November 14th through 15th for KubeCon China. It's our first event there, so we're super stoked about that. And of course we have our uh, flagship event in North America in uh, Seattle, December 11th through 13th, and then uh, Europe next year, uh, May 21st through 23rd. So um, moving on, next slide. Um, oh, this needs to be updated, but our next meeting uh, will be uh, the 18th, and we'll be hearing from the Net Data Project. So uh, next slide. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, hopefully everyone has a, a good Tuesday. And uh, thank you again to our community presenters uh, from China who definitely um, were staying up late. So I appreciate the time and uh, we'll try to do better on time zones in the future. So thank you, uh, Alan, Vaughn, and Jerry. Well, oh, take care, everyone. Uh, Chris, did, yeah. uh, did Brian mention that he wanted to discuss some other sure. procedural stuff? Oh, uh, I thought uh, we have time now. If you want to do it, we have seven minutes. Otherwise, I was. Gonna uh, well, we also time. don't have very many TSC members here, so yep. uh, maybe we should start that on the mailing list. Yeah. Oh, cool. I agree. Cool. All right. Sounds good to me. All right. We'll have more time. Thanks, next everyone. Week. All right. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.